It just gets me when I keep hearing, oh, the FBI is out to get Republicans and conservatives, et cetera, and yet I keep seeing again and again, example after example, A, of the FBI going after Democrats and no one talking about it, and B, the FBI doing, led by Chris Wray, lifelong Republican, who now is the boogeyman for many on the right as well, um, mm -hmm. you know, doing the hard work, trying to, to mete out justice fairly and just constantly being under attack. Don't you think there's a, a hangover in particular, though, on the right from what we saw during the Trump years, like Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, and all those, like, I don't think they've gotten past some of the texts that we've seen yeah, and the bias true. that was obviously there against Trump. And so there's all, there's a guard up, like these guys are against us. They're not on our side. Mm -hmm. And now everything is seen through that, those lenses. I, I think that's fair. I, I, I think that's fair. I mean, I, again, you, you have the, um, the inspector general report that was done by the FBI had a bipartisan Senate investigation. None of them found political bias on the part of the FBI, even if they found uh, that mistakes were made. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, but you're on record saying that Donald Trump will win the 2024 Republican presidential nomination. And when I was preparing for this segment with you today, I was going to present you with all these polls showing Ron DeSantis way ahead of Trump, Ron DeSantis, and then there was a poll this morning saying that, that Trump is ahead of DeSantis by 17 points in one poll. Um, you know, you were suggesting he's not even posing much of a threat. That was a few months back. You still feel that way? Yeah, and it has nothing to do with my assessment of Ron DeSantis as an individual politician or, you know, who I would vote for necessarily, but um, yeah, I don't. I think Trump really remains the elephant in the room, and he's unmovable by DeSantis or anyone else. And even if that poll hadn't come out this morning, Dan, I would be standing by what I said before because Trump <laughs> has a unique base of support, unlike anything else we've seen. And while DeSantis is beloved, probably maybe by more Republicans, um, that's not going to help him unless everybody else gets out of the race, and they're not going to. You try telling Mike Pompe Pompeo not to run, Mike Pence not to run. Maybe Nikki Haley could be persuaded not to do it. I don't know. But John Bolton, he says yeah. he's going to run. <laughs> right. But isn't it, isn't know, it weird done. that Republicans would want to nominate the one guy that, according to most polls, is the one guy Joe Biden could potentially beat? They don't. They don't. I, I believe probably most Republicans still, if you did 10 polls out of 10, um, most would say DeSantis over Trump. However, it's not going to be man to man. It's going to be Trump, DeSantis, Pompeo, Pence, and so on. And in a split field, this is how Trump got the nomination back in 15, 16. In a split field, Trump wins. His core 30% is all he needs to get the GOP nomination. And frankly, that core 30% is going to decide the election in the general as well. Because if Trump gets the election, he, he gets the GOP nomination, and then he goes forward, that's a critical piece of the, of the GOP base. But if DeSantis beats him, let's say DeSantis does beat him, okay? And the rest of the field leaves so that DeSantis Sanders can be the anointed one, and he, and he beats Trump. Mm -hmm. You really think tr Trump is going to go quietly into the night right. and say, you know what? I lost. I lost fair and square, yeah. and now I'm going to get behind. <laughs> no. Yeah. He's going to be a spoiler. He's going to tell his voters right. not to go home. He might tell them to vote for the Democrat. He might run as a third party if he can get on the ballot in time. Um, there's just everything we know about this man tells us he will not go gently into the night and pass the baton yeah. to the new blood in the GOP party. Real quick, you think that in Idaho they have a pretty overwhelming case against Brian Koberger? It looks that way so far, but that's me saying I'm going to see other evidence. That's me believing they're going to find his actual DNA at the crime scene more than just the button and probably the victim's DNA back at his house like we saw today in the search warrant and what they've been removing from the, from his home, right? If the victim's DNA is in his home, that's ball game. So far what they have is you could work with it as a defense attorney. You could you could talk about touch DNA on that button. You could talk about the infallibility, the, the lack of infallibility of um, you know cell phone tower data, uh, the car and so on. It's not dead to rights yet, but yeah. they haven't revealed their whole case yet. Usually I'm blathering on with my opinions on all this stuff. When I have Megyn Kelly on the show, I want to sort of listen a little bit more oh, than blather thank on. Thank you. That's nice. Megyn Kelly, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Good to see you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.